two types of the dynamical systems. One of them is one of them is discrete dynamical system, and the other one is the continuous dynamical system. I'll, today I'll discuss only the discrete one. Continuous, basically, you can uh, you can analyze the continuous systems by pure analogy, and there are some materials in the yellow book on that, and there are some lecture notes from earlier. From if you if you're following my uploads on the website or and on Moodle. You probably noticed that I uploaded the lecture notes from 2010. The lecture notes which are created by Dr. Uh, Jonathan Cress. They are very good lecture notes. And in particular, you, you will find this information there. Anyway, the canonical example of the dynamical system, discrete dynamical system, it's like this. You just introduce a variable, x sub n, and you just give a meaning to this variable. It is the investment or the amount of money you have after n months of investment into something, into some assets. Uh, obviously, in this context, x naught will be the initial investment. In my example, I will take 100 for the initial 100 units of the initial investment. And you have the condition that you have the 12% return rate, annual return rate, or 1% of monthly return rate. It's a very simple dynamical system. We, know, we all know how to solve that. You don't need complex numbers to do that. I mean, like, I guess every person in Australia who has any money in a bank account, you know, he knows how to solve this dynamical system. Uh, you just make the observation you have this recurrence relation which governs your dynamical system, this recurrence relation, that the, the amount on your bank account in the n plus one month will be 1.01 times the amount of money you had in the nth month. Together with the initial condition like so, you, you know how to solve this dynamical system. The, the solution comes immediately, that's a geometric progression, and you got your solution. But that's a prototype, prototype which tells us what the dynamical system systems are and what we're facing when we try to solve them. Here's another example. Here's another example of a dynamical system. Again, so effectively, dynamical systems, it's something which is given by the recurrence relation. When the recurrence, recurrence relation is simple as this, you can solve it almost immediately. When the recurrence relation not as simple as this, you need some methods how to solve this. And there are examples in the, in the, in the finance, for instance, when you come up with the more convoluted recurrence relations. I'm not, a, I'm not going to discuss this right now, but you will meet them in a due course. So, for instance, if you look at the recurrence relation like this, that's another recurrence relation. And it may appear in some other finance setting easily. It is no longer so obvious how to solve such a recurrence relation. However, actually, in this case, maybe it is obvious, because in this case, if you just spend maybe five or ten minutes with this recurrence relation, you will realize there are two solutions, which you can guess relatively easy. One of them is just a constant one. If your sequence xn has constant values 1, it will be a solution to this recurrence relation. It's a very easy check. 1 take 2 plus 1 is 0. Another solution which comes almost immediate if you just try to guess, it's just integers, n. Again, you can, easy, you can easily double check that this will be a solution. n, if you do the arithmetic, it will be n take 2 times n times n take 1 plus n take 2. It's an easy check again. It is 0. Oops, I don't know why I got... Oh, yeah, it's all good. Sorry. It's all good. So these two solutions, we will call them on the next slide, we will, when, when I give you more systematic approach to dynamical systems or more systematic approach to something which I will call difference equations. Difference equations. This will be called the difference equation on the next slide. These two solutions on that slide, we will call them the fundamental solutions these two. And I will give you a method how to find such fundamental solutions for, in principle, in principle, for every particular difference equations, it may be quite a laborious computational task actually, finding these fundamental solutions. But in principle, we do have a method. We will discuss it on the next slide. But 
listen to this. Now we can actually step up the problem a little bit. We can say, what if I want to find a solution to my difference equation, like in this example, which is subject to some initial conditions? Because when I guess this two, I didn't really, I didn't really think about the, about any initial conditions. Here we had an initial condition, our initial investment. In this example so far, I haven't supplied any. What if I supply some initial conditions like this? It's a random choice, three and five. What we're gonna do then? Well, what you can observe actually, maybe you don't know yet how to find the solution, like a formula for the solution in terms of N. But what you can observe, you can find a few initial values for, it, for the solution, right? You can easily compute, for instance, the value. We know x1, we can compute the value x2. Just, just by following this difference equation, we can compute the value for the x2, that's the formula. If I sub in the values, it will give me seven. I can find x3. Again, just by following this difference equation, it will be double of x2 take x1. And if I do the arithmetic, that will give me nine. I can do x4. Again, by following my difference equation, and by doing the arithmetic, I will find the value 11. And from this moment on, probably we can guess the pattern here. We're looking at the all odd integers. And so I can conclude now, with a bit of a guessing, of course, that it, it looks like that my general solution, which, which meets these initial requirements, will be like so. Again, you can do a double check, you can take the solution, you can plug it in into the difference equation and, and make sure that this, I mean, they just in, in see that this really a solution. However, the observation which I would like to make right now is that if you look at the solution we just found by basically initial computation and some guessing, it is a combination of my fundamental solutions of this one and this one. It is a combination of the fundamental solutions like this. We take three of the first fundamental solution, or zeroth fundamental solution, and two of the first fundamental solution. This is something we're going to observe on the next slide. This is one of the fundamental results about the dynamical systems. Every solution to a dynamical system, every solution to a dynamical system will be a linear combination of fundamental solutions. So our focus will be, and your focus will be when you will be looking at the dynamical systems, how to find how to find the fundamental solutions, and then having the fundamental solutions, you can take a combination of those to meet the particular requirements of the initial conditions.